The Mighty Thor, Norse God of Thunder. He is one of the strongest beings in the entire Marvel Universe. With his iconic hammer Mjolnir, there is almost no one who can stop this godly Avenger. Still, there are threats even the God of Thunder is unable to face alone. When his evil half-brother Loki threatened Asgard with his own armory of enhanced weapons, created in the same cosmic forge as Thor's hammer, Thor found himself in need of even greater strength and went on a quest for ancient power to defend his people. In doing so, Thor discovered that Loki was not the true threat to the gods of Asgard, but the gods above the gods. In this all-powerful state, Thor became not just the god of thunder, but a nearly omnipotent deity who threatened the cosmic order. This Rune King Thor, powered by ancient magical runes of Asgard and the incredibly powerful Odin Force, proved to be one of the most powerful characters to ever appear in Marvel Comics. Forging the Hammer this is the story of Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods, and the destruction of the mighty home of Asgard. But let's go back first to the beginning, the beginning of everything. And remember to subscribe to Plowmer Comics for even more epic videos like this. In the early days of the universe, Odin had the dwarves forge the hammer, Mjolnir, from the heart of a star using a cosmic forge. This forge was so powerful that its embers spread throughout the universe, wiping out life on distant planets, including the dinosaurs of Earth. This hammer was to be the ultimate weapon of the gods gods to help focus Odin's power. It eventually was handed down to Thor as Asgard's champion and strongest warrior. But jealousy overtook Thor's brother, Loki, who always felt overshadowed by the Thunder God, eventually leading him onto the path of evil and trickery. This is not the playful anti-hero Loki movie fans may know. This is a far more angry and outright evil Loki with no remorse, no tension between light and dark. Loki hated his brother and all those who defended Earth, seeing them as rivals and barriers to his rightful rule. Using his dark magic, Loki discovered the ancient forge of the dwarves when its power and incredible heat dried up a formerly raging river in the dwarves kingdom. After years and years of getting hit in the head by Thor's hammer, Loki saw his chance to finally do some of the hitting for a change and get revenge on Thor. Loki recruited the fire demon Surtur to use the forge and power it with his magical flames instead of the power of the sun. Eager to make Thor suffer, Surtur created an armory of weapons to equip some of Thor's greatest villains. Each weapon was massively powerful rivaling Thor's hammer. Led by Loki, the villains attacked Asgard, killing several of Thor's allies and gravely injuring his old love, Lady Sif. Despite the surprise assault, Thor leapt into battle and bravely confronted the villains. He raised Mjolnir and swung it with incredible force. His hammer clashed with the weapons of Ulic the Troll and Loki's son, Fenrir. The weapon's collision created an incredible explosion that created a massive crater in the ground. As he dust settled, Thor discovered his once indestructible weapon was shattered. Before he could recover, Loki used his magic, blasted Thor, and destroyed the land around him, sinking Thor into the sea. As he began to lose consciousness and was attacked by the ancient creature known as the Midgard Serpent, he used what magic remained in his hammer to transport himself to his allies, the Avengers, in New York City. With his last bit of strength, he called upon the Avengers to assemble. The King of Asgard Prior to these events, Thor had taken the throne of Asgard from his deceased father Odin, who died in battle against Surtur. As a result of Odin's death, Thor was granted Odin's incredible power known as the Odin Force. This mystic power grants unimaginable magical capabilities, strength, and knowledge to the one that wields it. The limits of this incredible power are unknown, but among its many gifts, it granted Thor the ability to control time. He used his ability to make up for his first attempt at being king. After he was crowned, Thor's rule was disastrous and he fell into petty greed and despotic rule over Asgard and the Earth alike, which ultimately ended in the destruction of his kingdom. After the earth was nearly destroyed, Thor used the Odin force to travel back in time, imbue his younger self with his memories and misdeeds, and prevent the disasters he himself went on to cause. This sacrifice meant saying goodbye to the son he had in this alternate future, a heartbreaking moment in the god's life. After going back in time to the early days of his rule, Thor lost the power of the Odin force and was left with just his regular abilities. When Loki and his team of villains attacked, Asgard was still recovering from the loss of Odin and rebuilding its strength, so the kingdom was at its most vulnerable and Thor at one of his lowest points. After failing as a ruler and losing the abilities of the Odin Force, Thor doubted his own moral and physical strength. When Mjolnir was destroyed by the combined powers of Loki's newly forged weapons, Thor became lost, believing his cause was hopeless. He saw his strength tied to his weapon and not his own inner being. But we all know Thor is the god of thunder, not the god of hammers, and the loss of one weapon should not mean we count him out for too long. 
With the help of Captain America and Iron Man, Thor returned to Asgard and battled through a horde of giants imprisoning his people. In the battle, Thor defeated Ulick the Troll and with the help of Cap and Iron Man, drove out Fenrir and the giants. In the midst of the violence, the trio discovered a lone survivor, a young boy who Thor takes in as his squire. Together, the Avengers use the enhanced weapons they took from their enemies to forge a new hammer for Thor to channel his energies. Their arrival was too late, however, and Asgard had already suffered massive casualties including Thor's brother Baldur the Brave, one of the kingdom's greatest champions after Thor. After mourning Baldur, Thor sent his human allies away and rallied the remaining people of Asgard to wage glorious battle against those who attacked them. It is an epic Viking moment that is only missing a killer Led Zeppelin musical cue. The Battle for Asgard In the weeks that follow, as Thor and his Asgardians travel through the Nine Realms in search for survivors and those who could aid in their war against Loki, Thor discovers his old friend Volstagg had survived the initial attack, although his once round figure was now shrunken and thin with hunger. Thor appealed to Volstagg's honor and righteous fury to encourage him to take up arms and return to the battle. In doing so, Thor reveals how he has grown as a leader and king, inspiring his people to rally toward a greater purpose. This spark of leadership and compassion is part of what makes him worthy to discover the power that he will need to win the day as Rune King. But Thor had no idea the truth that was waiting for him or the cosmic mysteries that he was about to uncover, along with the surprise guide that would lead him. The armies of Asgard march along, encountering in the kingdom of Anaheim more of Loki's destruction and a strengthened and even more dangerous Fenrir. The battle continues with Lady Sif revealing that she is still alive, though missing an arm. As things turn bleak with Thor himself exhausted and bloodied, Thor's alien ally and the former wielder of Mjolnir itself, Beta Ray Bill, arrives just in time to defeat Fenrir in a surprise assault. This horse-faced hero, an alien warrior who had proven himself worthy of wielding the hammer of Thor years ago, was granted a hammer of his own named Stormbreaker, a weapon that rivals Mjolnir in power and abilities. Bill's arrival is a glimmer of hope in the ever-growing darkness. Bill convinces his allies to let him stay and fight with them. Thor reluctantly agrees, not wanting to drag any of his mortal friends into a battle of gods. This fear for the safety of his allies is only heightened when Thor discovered that the young boy he had taken in died in the battle. As he mourns, the Thunder God laments the loss of the Odin Force and its seemingly infinite power. He decided that raw strength would not be enough to defeat Loki, so Thor went seeking the wisdom of Odin, believing this was his father's greatest strength. To do this, Thor would have to retrace his father's steps. Believing that Odin must have foreseen these events, Thor wonders if Asgard's death and his failure were merely fate, insurmountable and unavoidable. As he despaired at the futility of fighting, the Odin Force revealed itself to Thor, taking the form of the young boy who had died. The Odin Force was more than just a power, it had a mind of its own. It told Thor that his time as a mortal, as punishment by his father, set him apart from the other gods, giving him a perspective no one else in Asgard has. For those less familiar with the comics version of Thor, this is in reference to the time Thor spent as Donald Blake, a human doctor who needed the assistance of a cane to walk. In the Marvel comics, Thor first appears as Blake and we discover that Odin banished Thor to teach him humility. He sent Thor to Earth under his fake identity and left Thor to live a mortal life. Thor lived as Donald Blake with no memory of his godhood for a decade before he discovered Mjolnir again when he was granted the powers of the Thunder God. This mortal perspective was how Odin sought to teach his son to become worthy of the strength he had so abused. Thor demanded to know why the Odin Force left him and the power explained that he was not yet ready, unworthy of the burden of its power. It was another lesson from Odin about humility. The Odin Force explained that Thor sought to use it as a cure-all, an easy solution to all problems without any understanding of how the power worked or the wisdom to see where restraint allowed for more growth or opportunity. And poor Thor always has his dad telling him he is unworthy, even from beyond the grave. To take the Odin Force again, Thor would need to seek deeper wisdom, just as Odin had that only through knowing and sacrifice can one become a god. It is more than birthright or inheritance. True strength requires sacrifice and effort. In other words, no pain, no gain. Wisdom Quest From here, things start to get less superhero story and more mythology, so strap in for an epic quest and some trippy sequences. Just as in the original Norse myths, to pursue wisdom, Odin gave his eye and hung from the Tree of Life for nine days and nine nights. To become the all-knowing god he had been, required him to perform a ritual of death and sacrifice. To move beyond himself, Odin had to destroy himself. The first step was to sacrifice an eye to the enchanted well of Mimir, whose waters granted knowledge. To gain the benefit of Odin's wisdom, Thor attempted to recreate his father's actions, but ripping out just one eye gained him nothing. 
The Odin Force told him that this was a path already taken and that merely recreating his father's deeds was an empty gesture. The well itself would not grant Thor what he sought. It required the strength to look inside and find his own ritual to face his own fate and the fate of all the gods. The power told Thor he knew what was needed. And so Thor grimaced in pain but proceeded to remove his remaining eye. After discarding his second eye into the well, the Odin Force smiled and told Thor he could not imagine what now waits for him. With both eyes forever closed, he was ready to see with his whole being. Thor's eyes were open to the past, to the dawn of the universe, through his own lifetime and the cycles of defeat and victory. In seeing these past events, he also learned the truth of the Norse gods, that these deaths had happened before, many times before. It was Ragnarok, the cyclical deaths of the gods that they had lost time and time again in many forms. This truth drove Thor past the brink of despair into hopelessness. Why did the gods suffer endlessly again and again? The Odin Force instructed Thor to seek out the knowledge and magic of the ancient runes. Thor shouted back that he was blind and it would be impossible for him to read any runes. The Odin Force informed him that his eyes were nothing compared to his very life. To complete his task, Thor would have to cast his life aside and be reborn. With Odin's ravens by his side, Hugin and Mugen, who see memories and the thoughts of all the world, Thor traveled to the foot of Yggdrasil, the tree of life. The raven's knowledge rushed over Thor, who could now see what Odin saw, the heartbreak of losing all that he had loved, including his traitorous half-son Loki. The Odin Force told him this knowledge was still not enough and that he required the magic of the runes to step beyond what even Odin foresaw. To acquire them meant going beyond even what Odin experienced when he hung from the tree on the brink of death. Thor needed to step into the very maw of death and die himself. The burden of the wisdom and knowledge he had already gained weighed Thor down immensely. He had sought the wisdom in the pursuit of power to stop Loki and Ragnarok, but instead, all he had was visions of greater pain to come. Thor wondered, how could tomorrow ever follow today? Instead of strength, Thor felt weaker than ever. In desperation, the Thunder God hung himself upon the tree seeking the knowledge of the runes which would grant him power to see the future and change reality. And please do not try this at home. As Thor hung there from the tree, he was granted the wisdom of the runes that gave him incredible sight beyond mortal or god. He peered across dimensions through time and space. This gave him the knowledge to do more than pick the correct lottery numbers or invest in the right stock but understand the truth of everything and all of reality. As his cosmic senses moved beyond quantum structures and into the void, he was soon overwhelmed by seeing the future of all living things. He realized that his banishment into the mortal world was more than punishment, but part of a plan by Odin to put an end to the cycle of death and rebirth. Horrified by what is intended of him to end Ragnarok, he refused and fell to the ground in the throes of death. Thor's struggle is a life lesson worth taking with you. Doing the right thing and the quest for self-improvement often requires us to make hard decisions and experience pain along our quest. In grand superhero fashion, this is a truth of life experience on an epic scale. After his death, Thor awoke in the realm of Hela, the goddess of death, but was saved by the embodiment of the Odin Force who declares Hela and death's time over once and for all. Carried by Odin's ravens, the Thunder God found himself in an empty black void. Despite his missing eye, he was able to see figures towering over him, shining white amid the inky black. This imposing pantheon was called Those Who Sit Above in Shadow, a mystery unknown to any in Asgard. They were ancient gods, greater and older than even the Norse gods. His magical sight allowed Thor to see beyond their shadows and illusions. Facing these ancient deities, Thor stood up to them and threatened their reign, but their leader taunted him. Knowledge of them did not matter. What could he do with that knowledge? You cannot understand what you have no context for, the leader said. They saw Thor as nothing but a toy. Thor interrupted, calling those who sit above children, playing with people's lives, watching, and laughing at their pain. Thor revealed that he knew their secret, that they feed on the gods and their suffering and death. But those who sit above just laughed, believing Thor was powerless against them. They had seen his fate and knew he was helpless before them. 
Oh, comic book villains, always so sure that they're going to win and never able to resist a good gloat session. But Thor threatened them again, saying he had become something they could have never foreseen. When those who sit above claimed they saw all things, Thor corrected them. Odin had seen a way to hide Thor from their sight. Those who sit above might have known the gods in all their potential and strengths, but they knew nothing of mortals. Having lived among them, their ways and their potential also lived in him. Thor's power was not just the ancient Asgardian magic, but his unpredictability and refusal to play by the ancient rules of mythology. Tired of bickering back and forth, Thor opened his eyes, now glowing blue with crackling energy, and teleported himself back to Asgard. Rune King Thor Strength and Abilities In possession of the knowledge of the runes, a god could divine the future and cast spells upon the now. After hanging from the Tree of Life, the combined wisdom of the Well of Amir and the discovery of the ancient runes gave Thor vision and knowledge to know the past, control the present, and guide the future. This essentially made Thor an all-knowing deity capable of seeing how the events of the past and present could impact the future and change fate. Beyond just seeing across time, he could peer through reality itself, understanding the complex connections between each living creature and the world around it. The runes gave him the sight to see beyond lived reality to those who moved the strings of fate and played with the lives of the gods, beings who lived in shadow and played with the Norse pantheon like toys. In combination with his experience as a mortal and refusal to accept fate and destiny, it made Thor a uniquely unpredictable being who did not play by old rules of godhood. Though he possessed his abilities for only a short time, the ease to which Thor defeated old enemies and dealt with Loki and those who sit above revealed just how vast his strength was. After arriving on Asgard from the Void, Thor was immediately attacked by Mangog, one of the most powerful monsters he had ever faced. The Mangog is a nigh unstoppable force of nature, a supremely powerful monster bent on destroying all gods. An embodiment of hatred against the gods, Mangog has often outclassed Thor in terms of sheer strength, where Thor has always struggled to defeat the Mangog, in this case, the newly powered Rune King Thor defeated the creature with a mere wave of his hand, ending the threat without effort. Which is just such a stunning display of power given how powerful Mangog has been shown to be. Once face to face with his brother, Loki gloated and insulted Thor, saying he was shocked that Thor could read anything, let alone the magic runes. Loki expected a lecture and a dramatic battle or attempt to understand what he was after. But Thor brushed him aside. His magic sight had already told him everything there was to be known about Loki and his army. At this, Loki summoned a host of trolls to attack Thor. As they jumped on the Thunder God, he easily blasted them away without moving as a blue aura surrounded him and protected him. The trolls were tossed aside easily. Loki quipped, You're going to make this difficult, aren't you? To which Thor responded with a single word, Impossible. As with another wave of his hand, Thor activated his rune magic to summon a dragon to destroy the kingdom and Loki's prize. Loki fell to his knees. He wants to rule, not to see the kingdom destroyed. Loki turned to his brother and wanted to know why, but Thor was not interested in explanations. With his show of strength complete, Thor told Loki it was time that he be punished for the lives of the many brave men he had taken. As punishment, he would be made less than a man. Thor then proceeded to pop Loki's head from his body like it was an action figure, horrifying and humiliating his brother. Thor strapped Loki's head to his belt, forcing his brothers to stay with him until the end of all things. Each of these feats illustrate that Rune King Thor was essentially able to rewrite the rules of reality, moving people and creatures into and out of existence, magically popping their bodies apart and becoming all but untouchable. These mystical and godly feats were amplified by Thor's unpredictable nature. The Odin Force looked on as Thor dealt with Loki, amazed and excited it could not see Thor's thoughts. His mortal influence made him completely unpredictable, an asset that Thor now knew he could leverage against those who sit above. Thor would bring about the final Ragnarok, save the gods of Asgard from their constant humiliation, and bless them with a true final battle that would honor their sacrifices. If those who sit above feed upon the death and rebirth of the gods, the only way to defeat them would be to end it all forever. And with the Odin Force and the wisdom of the runes, Thor could make it happen. Unweaving Destiny Now it was time to make the final move. Thor was ready to put an end at last to Asgard's suffering. Thor would unleash one of his greatest foes and unravel the threads of destiny itself. Thor proceeded to the land of the fire giants and approached the demon Surtur, still forging his ancient weapons. Surtur was prepared to do battle, but Thor had other plans. He offered Surtur a deal, reforged Mjolnir, and he would open a path to Asgard for Surtur to wage war against his kingdom. 
Loki was horrified, saying that he was supposed to be the evil one, not Thor. But Thor knew, after sacrificing himself, dying and becoming reborn into wisdom, that this death was necessary for victory. One true final battle that would never be repeated. Surtur was happy to oblige if it meant he was able to kill, and so the hammer was remade, and Surtur marched upon Asgard, where he was met with the combined might of the gods who remained. As the war raged on, Thor approached the fates, weaving the tapestry of destiny of magic threads. The fates warned him that he could not undo the fate that was already woven. He saw the tapestry had been made, but also saw that the threads fed back into itself. There was no beginning or end to the loom, just a never-ending cycle. Against the protests of Loki and the fates, Thor raised Mjolnir with all its mighty power, prepared to split the thread and end the cycle once and for all. As his hammer was raised, poised to break the thread, those who sit above appeared beyond time, stopping Thor mid-swing. They congratulated him on all that he had accomplished and offered him a seat at their side. He had surpassed mere godhood, becoming something even greater, a threat to them and their power. Having seen their game for what it was, they knew the only thing that could stop Thor from taking his decisive action was the temptation to ascendancy. He could be a god of gods, but Thor had already ascended into something beyond them. Calling them children again for their apology that came too late, he meant to punish them and force them to face the consequences of their actions for the very first time. Thor destroyed the thread and the pantheon was shattered. The tree of life folded into itself and was no more. Thor's experience as a human gave him a perspective and belief in free will and self-determination that compelled him to rage against the fates in a way that no god could consider. This mortal-driven belief was masked from the shadow gods. They relied on the Asgardian belief in a singular and inevitable fate. Combined with the magical powers of the runes and the Odin Force, Thor was unstoppable. With Ragnarok's cycle broken and those who sit above defeated, there was nothing left for Thor to accomplish, no future he could foresee. Aware of his many deaths and rebirths, Thor was ready to rest, to empty his mind and breathe deep the slumber of the gods. The power of the Odin Force and the rune magic were fading, and so Thor joined his fellow Asgardians in the beyond, for a while at least. I have been Slice of Otaku of Plot Armor Comics. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.